of the time stream. Dodge vomit to your left. Make sure you're not being grabbed from your right. Grab a table, conjure a chair, and join us to talk about all things the dungeon run. Uh, sorry, I know we're a little late. I just walked in the door. I laughed at whoever said. <laughs> Ready? Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Um, Yes, yeah, so this episode was amazing. This episode, we have so much to say. I actually want you to go first, Vanderslice, opening uh, comments and um, mall rating. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, well, um, so just, my mall just, rating. What? Yeah, yeah, just opening comments. And oh, rating. okay. <laughs> opening comments. Uh, Vomit was absolutely disgusting. Thank you very much for your awesome, awesome talent, Map Room, because that was absolutely disgusting. And the rage effect was super cool. Um, and I don't like seagulls and multiple plans. So, mall rating eight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, opening thoughts. This episode had literally everything uh uh yeah it, it had excitement it had comedy it had romance it had battles character development even a little bit of uh uh yeah awkward planning going on here um i will explain but my overall rating guys don't hate me is a 6.9 but before we <laughs> before we dive dive wow. in uh I do want to let everybody know that everything that anyone donates or gives to the stream really does go straight back into the show. Uh, I know Jeff said two weeks ago not to do that, but he failed his pers uh, persuasion check, unfortunately. Um, it is pretty exciting. We have already given three potatoes to the potato harvest. It's exciting. Um, so there's that. I also want to take a second to say that the Stump the DM segment we did two weeks ago was awesome. And guys, we successfully stumped Jeff. Uh, in fact, he we stumped him so hard. Uh, I loved this meme that someone posted. Uh, man in the back, you got it? Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff got a 67% on his trivia segment. It's super exciting. Um, and just so everybody knows, we are doing a Stump the DM segment part two. So uh, if you head over to the Discord, there is a secret question room. Jeff does not have access to this room. Everyone is piling questions in on there. I will put together the final questions. And in a few weeks, we will have a Stump the DM part two. So it's exciting. Um, lastly, I do uh, want to remind everybody that we are having a watch party contest. Do, 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 do. I'm actually super excited because there are people who've already submitted stuff and it's so exciting. And I know I need to return some emails, but yes, the contest for those who don't know is simply to promote the world of Ein. However, that appeals to you, video, art format, comic strip, et cetera, et cetera. All the details are posted on Discord. Any questions, comments, concerns, don't hesitate to email me at the email address right there or message me on Discord. Um, yeah, it's exciting, it's fun, uh, and it's just a way for us all to get involved in and share the world of I. So that is amazing. Uh, yeah, okay, girl, take it away. Uh, actually, I'll go first because I did give a 
Yes, I want to start I think off. You should go for it first and explain why it's a six point nine. <laughs> okay, so this episode had so many amazing, like scenes. It was was it hard for me to rate? Um, so it's not it's not. I think the reason I gave it a 6.9 is it started off great. <laughs> Not enough white beard. That's someone's reason. Yeah. <laughs> is, there, is there ever enough white beard though? Um, the, the ending was amazing. Mind blowing, on the edge of my barrel, exciting. I my My only kink with it and I think what didn't land with me was the center part of the episode and I think you kind of touched on it a little bit as well mm. um the planning was what didn't land with me um so there's two reasons that I gave it a 6.9 one is they're going to see the Viscount who talks to the dead <laughs> So I'm really confused on their planning of why pretending to be dead, how, I don't know how they saw that working um, because he literally talks to the dead. He he can drink the liquor. They've shown it on many different clips and scenes. So I don't know how they expected that to fool him really. Uh, The second reason- They thought he was kind of cuckoo crazy and was just imagining them. And so maybe they just didn't really put two and two together that- He was probably actually talking to the dead. Except the fact that they did several times when Chilron spoke to Ostrom after drinking the liquor of the dead. I might have thought that was a Triton talent that he could have done, possibly. I don't know. But then then James saw him in the vision where he saw the Viscount drinking the liquor and talking to to Lady Josephine and Sir Ostrom. Also still maybe a little cuckoo. (laughs) <laughs> either way I was like eh. uh and then the other point of their plan uh yes they did exactly uh also oh they the, the whole reason they're going to the Viscount is to get information they want to learn more about everything why would you why would lying be the answer to this a, a solution uh when they were saying that they that <laughs> They knew the Lord of Crows, and I'm thinking, how are you going to get information about the Lord of Crows if you're telling him he sent you there? It doesn't the make sense. idea was kind of an, uh, it didn't make a whole lot of sense. Like, hey, I know about this guy, but I don't know a whole lot. Can you tell me more? It, it just, I feel like there could have been maybe better ways to, a better plan that they could have came up with. Now, me coming up yes. with a plan, I couldn't give you one, but. Oh, uh, I mean, I, I, I have ideas. It does make a good point. Okay. Well, thank you. So, so then my second, so that was the first part, the first part, their whole planning process. I was just like, but it was don't get funny. Me wrong. It was, it, it was funny. hilarious. It was, I was, I, I was laughing all the, the whole camaraderie. time. Oh yeah. I was laughing the whole time. Yeah. But the second part, which leads to the second reason it dropped a few miles for me is because if you, for me, this is a, this is one of their most intense moments in the storyline in a while. It's been so long since they've had a chance to know more information about the main storyline, more about the wardens, more about the, the old ones, more about the connection between the old ones and the wardens, more about Calcutta Theed, why Yan Mo is Yan Mo. So many questions that they potentially could have gotten answers here. And I, I didn't think the tone fit, I think. I think that they went about it a little too comical when it was such a serious moment. At least for me, as a watcher, I'm just like, this moment is huge. And if you take the ending of the last episode where James gives his big reveal, the seriousness, the tension, the tone, he wants to know anything. And if you cut to him kind of doing the well, we brought you a dead body. I just don't feel the tone matched for me personally. Um, but with that said, there were so many good parts of this episode. It was hard for, this is probably one of the hardest episodes for me to rate because it was so good. But for those reasons alone, I had to, I had to give it a 6.9. Uh, so yeah, your turn. So I, I agree about the whole, the, the whole middle part. It just, to me, it didn't work out. And the reason why I don't really like that there were so many plans 
Because I feel like this was uh, that they were they were doing so good at getting things done, getting things accomplished, asking what needs to be done. They were really making some forward progress as working with the team and figuring out what they need to do next really quickly. They managed to do that over a few episodes. And I was like, thank goodness, because they were squalling around towards the beginning of this whole, hey, we're in a past and we don't know what it does with the timeline and what should we do with Choran, like all that squalling around. I feel like they went backwards and started revisiting, well, if we do this, if this happens and we need to do this, if this happens and we need to do this, you're spending an awful lot of time with ifs and buts and you're not really making any progress anywhere. What is the main thing that you need to achieve while going into this lighthouse? What is a, a really great, what, what, is, what has been an effective way to get the information that you need thus far based off of all the conversations? And you guys have had a lot of conversations over this entire series. What is the most effective way to get information out of somebody who thinks incredibly highly of themselves? You've gone through lots of different people, Ertenfurt, the Duke, um for bargain bargain i always want to call him borgen but so many different villains yeah, you can it. you can get you guys can get information out of him and who's the person that usually does a really great job lily who is the person that was silent on this lily oh, lily, no, i mean not morgan no, sorry morgan true. james did a great lily, was, great job but was, i don't think it was i think lily could have gotten more information out of him but lily's idea was to be the dead body so she can't talk yeah, so, uh, and yeah. to, to answer, to make, to answer your question, your comment before I forget it. Yeah. Yes, if they had a, to me, if they had a better game plan and a more serious approach, I would have given this episode a nine. Oh yeah, it I would really have given it a much better rating. Episode. So, um, and yeah. I, I actually, sorry, what? Okay. Oh, for that section, I was actually giving it like a six teetering maybe on a seven for the first half of the whole episode just because of a lot of that you know making the plans how long it took and and putting all that together and a few other things that happened in the beginning of the episode I was not too crazy about it that second half that was a nine so I kind of made an average out of those uh two different scores and that's why I came up with an eight because overall it was still a pretty good episode I did laugh I did have fun but to me for story wise it just didn't really speak to me that much for that middle section in particular and I'm not really a fan of the seagulls it just didn't make a whole See, lot of sense I to me I'm a huge fan of the seagulls. I don't even mind them taking a while to plan it was just their ideas specifically it was just like but I agree with you. There were so many good points and good things about this episode. Uh, and uh, let's start by talking about Whitebeard and Cho Ron. Uh, uh, that scene, that scene was really, really, really cool. Uh, I actually yeah. found that the, their their solution to their stalemate of Whitebeard has prisoners, but Cho Ron has the prize uh their their solution to use james was very interesting uh, it was a very which I think neutral was actually, solution well it was i actually think it was chiron's idea yeah yes, it was chiron's idea, idea but but james was a neutral solution james was in their eyes a neutral ground because up until then he had been doing his job and the most he has cared for anyone outwardly shown that he has cared for anyone is the safety of the sail swords and working together with them. And he's been working with Whitebeard. He's been working with Choran, but he's never really given much of a, hey, I give my entire being to you kind of a thing. I am totally on your side. So to them, from Whitebeard's perspective, from Choran's perspective, they both could, I mean, I could see that both of them could go, yeah. If he can read minds and he can tell if you're lying and you can he can find where the location is, that's a great intermediary person that I'm fine with that. He's a good neutral zone for us. Because otherwise, how else would they have solved that issue? No, it was very creative. Obviously, my concern is that James isn't actually on Whitebeard's side. So when Whitebeard's like, I trust you for now, I was like, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's a great plan, and I'm really excited to see how how it uh, goes through. Uh, uh, 
I, I highly suggest everyone check out the uh, no cast theory zone as well, because I know I had a lot to say about that topic also. Um, but I also think it's hilarious how Siv always feels the need to be like, like, why it has never even touched Chilron? The only one that's touched Chilron is Siv, which I yep. find hilarious. So no one's really on Whitebeard's side. I am Cas Farron. I'm on Whitebeard's side, just for the record. 105%, not 10, just five. Um, yeah, no, it was interesting. I, I really, I think that, I'm just excited to see what Chilron has up his sleeve. I think that that's what I'm curious for most. And I've been waiting for when Bao Jai said two episodes ago, when she said um, to James, she said, you haven't seen my power and what I can do. And I was like, okay, girl. Uh, I was really sparked by that. And I'm very curious what the Chilron family has at their sleeve. I don't think it's gonna be as simple as him just getting on Bingle. I think Chilron, like Whitebeard and hopefully the party soon, I think they all have an ace up their sleeve. And I really am just excited to see who plays it first. Uh, I'm just fine. excited to see what is this weapon. I am very curious. My interest has been piqued. It's like the ultimate weapon. Well, so many theories. Not going to discuss them here. But gosh, I check can't out the No Cast Theory Zone. It's, yes, it's, there. it's all in there. It's such a popular yes. channel. It's really great. Lily and Sue. What a cute moment. What that a cute was moment. a precious moment. Yes. But and I'm, to rain I, on everyone's parade, I don't ship that. I actually don't. <laughs> Just going to throw it out there before anyone starts thinking that I do. I actually don't. It was a precious moment. Beautiful poem. I don't ship it, though. I was actually wondering if you were going to say that. That's oh, yeah. Hilarious. No, I'm, I'm going to say that. Yeah. I... I think the moment was adorable. I'm surprised no one, uh, Jared needs to post the poem on the Discord because um, I, I, we don't have it. Um, usually by now I have a copy of it, but I don't. But it was really beautiful. And I loved, loved, loved when Siv said, I miss the old Lily. It was just so, but he said it with a smile. It was, that whole moment to me, whether you ship them or not, I thought was beautiful for me. Um, especially with Lily being the one to push the romance this time. Uh, she, Sid was like, another time, another time. And Lily was the one who was like, nope, 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 right now, right now. And Lily said that she loved him. Like, she's never said that before. It's no, just... she hasn't even really given much emotion before. That's why I don't ship it. Is I think so. <laughs> is a wonderful boyfriend. But Lily does not. She, does, she hasn't figured out what she wants or likes or any of that stuff. And she has a lot of things that she needs to process. She's not processing. And... That's why I don't like this relationship. I feel it's very, very one-sided. And I feel bad for Siv on that. I love Lily. Don't get me wrong. I love Lily. She just processing side of things is what's getting me hung up on it. And that's why I don't ship this relationship. And so with the I love you thing, my take on it is I love you. Not in, a, not in the same way that you love me, though. She loves you mm. like she loves Ogo. Like she likes Fahima. Like she loves James. She loves you. I would challenge that That's a little bit. I, I don't I don't remember how many episodes ago it was, but she actually sung Siv a song saying that she her heart did flutter when Siv was around. She wrote a song that specifically said how she felt about each member of the party, and she threw out some feels for Siv. She definitely well, did. Okay. I that, agree maybe with you. Maybe it was maybe. a little bit of feels, but I think it's more like sort of a crush not actually hey I feel deeply for you in that sense that you feel deeply for me in a way that we should have a serious relationship like you're wanting I don't agree with the relationship oh I love how we we differ I think it's oh, yeah. amazing I do uh I think I think Lily is letting her guard down emotionally now 
I agree. Whether she's confused or not, whether she knows what she wants right now, because clearly she doesn't. She just, She's so mixed up. She's kind of... Ugh. But it's, to me, regardless, it's very nice to, to see Lily throw these emotions out there. So when she didn't... When she let that wall down, it was like, Siv, let's read the poem. Siv, let's talk. Siv, I love you. I was just like, oh, it's about time. It's just so lovely. I, I enjoyed that scene immensely. It was and a very good scene. My favorite line when Siv was like, we didn't even make it into the room. <laughs> we didn't even make it into the room. So I... I would have laughed. I would have thought it would have been perfect if Whitebeard and, and everyone else came around the corner and they're just like reading poetry to each other. They didn't even make it into the room, didn't even warn Choran. They were just lost in each other. I would have laughed so hard at that. It would have been hilarious. Oh, yeah. Um, it would have been really hilarious. Uh, so we kind of talked about, we talked about Civ Bay, we talked about the plan. I do have to say, one of my favorite one of my favorite scenes was the fact that I know shocked into absolutely no one when Whitebeard was just like, sure, we'll let you do we'll let you uh go off and do the lighthouse thing, but we're not stopping the ship for you. Bye. <laughs> I loved it. It was such a whitebeard thing to do. Yep. Such a white yep. Thing to do. Don't waste any time. Ooh. If you want to get there quickly. Here's your quick way to get there. And so fast forward, because we did talk about the planning scene. Yes, I saw a lot of the comments about it, and I did not forget, and of course I'm going to mention it. The crates. I was I was 100% team open the crates. I was and I was so... 100% leave them alone. Why? Why? Because... Why? All it's gonna do is open up a can of worms that is unnecessary. Like to me, I'm like, it smells like a dead body. It's in a box for a dead body. It possibly looks like there's a dead body in there. What's gonna be in there? Undead. Why do we need to have a little pre battle before we even go see the Viscount? You're wanting to go talk. Just go in there, get your business done. There's no need to start stirring up the folks downstairs. I mean, just punching the little goals was enough but they took it so who's to say what's in those boxes that's such a that's such an assumption though they're there to find information they're yeah. there to learn go to your the information source knows. i'm an incredibly direct person when it comes to we're on a mission so go to the information source don't get distracted by potential loot or things to stab at go get your information that. then have fun later what if there was something in it that could have helped them? I'm going to laugh if we never get to open the crates because they're in such an intense battle. I can't see them just being like, cool, everything's said and done. So about those crates. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't see that <laughs> happening. But I just, man, you, my, I am more curious than the cat, okay? I need to know <laughs> what's in there. I need to know what's going on. For all you know, maybe it was information that they could have used to help them in their conversation. Who How knows? How do you think that you could know? possibly be then? What could what? How, how do you think there could have possibly been information in there? They already had a book, which they couldn't read. They had all these visions and stuff like that. Everything pointed Listen. to go talk to the Viscount. So what could potentially be in there other than scrolls or maybe some name tags? Okay, scrolls would be awesome. My approach to the Viscount would have 100% been to go and talk to my plan. I think it was plan F was to, I would literally just, I would open the crates. If there were dead bodies in there, cool. I would go to the Viscount. James and Lily have done this before. It's been very effective. I would have been like, hey, we... Your Sir Royal Highness, your amazingness, beat up his ego, which James originally said that's how he wanted to approach it. Uh, and I would be like, hey, I found this. I don't know about this. I got your book. Can you tell us more? Your all great highness, Viscount Majesty. Yeah, he likes to talk. I just let him talk. Yes, I hear you, baby. Um, and so I, I, name I, tags. Hello, my name is batch number 27. Yes, exactly. Sorry, continue. <sighs> Pale's got this plan. Go for it, Finnick. Yes, that's the plan I would have approached it with. And but I just, what if, what if, hypothetically, a, a, what if in those crates were dead bodies, and then when they opened them, 
they're just bones. They could have disposed of them, and now they have to fight them. You never know. You exactly. Never know. That's what Who I'm knows? saying. Don't don't go have fun before you need to go get your information. Get the thing that you <laughs> need to get done first, then go have fun. Either way, they didn't open the crate, so we might, and I, like I said, I can't see them just being like, so about those crates? So maybe Jeff, if we never get to him, can uh, post what's in those crates, because my curiosity, you know, it eats at me. But uh, I will say, the, the moving a little forward here, the, I think 90% of us agree that the absolute best part of this episode was James, as I said, turning that tone back on, that, that right level of seriousness, and just getting in the Viscount's face and blasting him. You are just oh. a butler. Like, how cool was that? That, I was think that was the best way to be like, mic drop, let's do this. Yes. And I was like, here we go. Because I was, oh, and, and James is, oh, when James, get, I just love James. But when James gets serious, when James gets stress when James feels any extreme emotion I'm in I'm I'm in the scene I'm in the moment I love that part so much uh and <laughs> seeing the bike count was so fun for me because that is not what I pictured him to look like no was, not me cool. either I I pictured him to be like a really hunched over uh very decaying old decrepit kind of like your worst nightmare seeing an old big fat man in a nursing home in a wheelchair. It's it's terrifying. So that's what I was picturing. Not big blob guy that looks like an old, <laughs> old, wrinkled up juggernaut, essentially. I'm gonna have to go but do he the looks same cool. thing I'm running around too. Be right back. <laughs> I, I think it's cool. It's crueler the way that he looked. It, 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 I think it, even though it's not what I pictured either, it definitely fit the scene. And yes, Jessica's and cats were awesome. I was letting my cat out. He's, he's adorable. Yeah, I was doing uh, it. He was starting to jump on the door. <laughs> uh, but I, I love the way that he looked. I think it fits so much better than what I pictured in my head. Um, uh, and the fact I loved it when Jeff looked directly in the camera and he was like, uh, the corpses of Sir Otto Pop and Lady Josephine rise. This is the whole, the whole start of the battle, the entire battle from start to finish was amazing. The fact that uh, Fahima tried to use her necromancy spell totally failed. And then just, even just when she was like, Fahima was all dramatic about it. I loved it, it was hilarious. So much I really wish to go show that she was actually truly a noob at any of this blood magic. Like, I'm gonna cast this. It was not effective. Huh. That's weird. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I I I loved it exactly. And it, it fit the, the fit the moment because she doesn't know what she's doing. And it was so it was so innocently perfect in her learning. And, and it reminded me back in the time where she when they were in the magma reserves and she was like I'm gonna touch the lava like she's so curious and yes. I relate to that I love that it's beautiful so even though it was a completely ineffective failed spell I loved the way it happened it was so Fahima it was so great um and definitely and you were talking of, about sorry go ahead I, I was gonna say uh no I was gonna move on so if you want to mention Fahima go for it oh yeah Fahima so as we were talking about on last episode, whenever she was trying that, like cutting her 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 arm and rehealing it and stuff, and she goes, oh, "I'm gonna go talk to Lily." We never saw that. At least I don't recall that. We never saw yeah. her go talk to Lily about that. And so when she cast that blood blood uh, slayer, whatever that 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 spell was, uh, going spell up against. It? So, anyways, as she was going up against him, and she cast that, James looked whoa what was that i love that because he, yeah, has, love he doesn't know that she's been experimenting with this kind of stuff there's going to be a big conversation about this because even she was even hinting throughout the day as they were getting up there well maybe i can give him this spell and maybe he'll like that because you know trade of knowledge and stuff she was eager to try this spell and they knew that she knew that particular spell but didn't know that she was actually going to cast it she was just really excited about it so i don't think, I think there's gonna be a big talk about this of, are you sure you want to go down this path honey 
I I don't think that she, they knew she had that spell. Uh, no, they knew she had uh, that spell because she talked about uh, finding it in the mage's book, and that's the one that she learned. She talked to James about it for sure, but she mentioned it several times throughout the episode last week. And so yeah. it didn't really come as a surprise to anybody. So everybody must have known that she knew that spell. She just hasn't used it yet. I loved it. I did. And I can't wait for that conversation. Uh, it's it's it, just with her, with James, her and Lily, her in the party. It's going to be awesome. And I did. So what I wanted to say is speaking of in character, because that spell is such a behemoth thing to do. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely loved Ugo in character full-blown I busted up so hard when he was like and she loved the letter C and I was laughing so hard freaking Ugo and see so so like I said I, I I'm very critical of of comedic moments in my serious moments which I already talked about but Ugo playing that was such an Ugo move <laughs> it was just like because he's he, he's he's always that guy who thinks he's sly but he's not really like like he thinks he's getting away with it he's a good actor but he's not and it's hilarious and even when he got all serious see james like i was i was laughing so hard it was uh i, I think that's one of my top five favorite other moments it was <laughs> i loved it and they ended up going with plan c anyway they went with they should listen to Ugo more i think that's my my yeah. solution yeah, I think I think they go with Plan C. I mean, yeah, they need to talk it out first, which they've learned that works pretty well. But yeah, go to Plan C when you're going up against somebody that's just really disgusting. And let me tell you, that vomit scene. Oh my gosh, I grossed out so hard. <laughs> I was laying on the couch and I had my cat on my legs. I grossed out so hard over it. I was screaming like, "Oh, it's so gross!" The cat up and left me. Okay, he could not handle. The disgustingness and he didn't even see it it was a really gross disgusting throat way to go game room that was map amazing. room yes the, the map room, I sorry. Love, yes. I, the fact that they had it ready and it was just this wave it was so it was awesome i Perfectly i love timed. how they even kept it on the floor like it was just great yeah uh and then and then when the party got split i can't remember who said it. i think a lot of us said it uh, which is so true. The fact is that the party actually three of them got pulled under into the different like room. Mm -hmm. So how convenient. Because if, if it was just one of them, that would have been crappy. Uh, but that was so cool. And the fact that the Lord of Crows was down there. Oh man. I actually, I know uh hashtag team force of evil. I'm actually hoping that James doesn't complete the banishment spell I no want the Lord to no. come back we're going yes. to lose fahima she gonna die okay uh james is out of spells now <laughs> and they're just now getting started really yeah because all the spells almost dead she's really close and lily just got out of a grapple and she doesn't she doesn't have a whole lot of fighting stuff she's a healer but there's only so much she can do per round that's a whole lot of nope right there. At least hold off for a few rounds. Oh yeah, no, he can he can hold it. But if it's nine rounds or however many, he can hold it for eight. It's fine. I just okay. I think the Lord of Crows is so cool. I'm just not done seeing him yet. That's pretty. Oh yeah, it. for I, sure. I, like I, have him come back later. Just not not soon. Not soon. Uh, I love how Dream Blaze is like no bad fail awful. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> He was just so cool. I just want to see more of him. Even just in the map room, he uses majestic wings and he's so... Oh, oh yeah, that man. was super, super cool. Now let's talk about that plant. That plant is in a perfect location in that room. It's a <laughs> circular room. Yes. And I'm pretty mm. sure, I haven't counted, but I'm pretty sure that room, the radius of that room is the range of that plant. That is nuts. The only place you can go hide is in that hallway that the Lord of Crows came out of. So how are they going to, they have to move over around. They're going to get hit quite a few times before they can actually make it over there is what I'm thinking, because don't, isn't it kind of 
With all the bones and stuff, wouldn't that be difficult terrain as well? Some of the water is difficult terrain. I don't know about yeah. the bones. Maybe. Ooh, I don't know. I feel I feel they're not going to be alone for long. I think the Viscount looked pretty bad at the end there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I don't know. Steph and was I thinking think about jumping down anyways. He was. He like, was. I go, you got well, this, keep, man. Keep in mind, Siv doesn't know that the Lord of Crows is down there yet. He doesn't know that they're in trouble. I mean, it's kind of common sense. They got stuck into the ground. Something's going on. But he doesn't know that the Lord of Crow is down there. So he, he's going to wait till the Viscount's done for. But uh, I'm so sad, like I said. I, I, I hope they don't kill the Viscount. I hope that they kind of knock him out or something. Because I want information. I mean, agree. Like, he, has, he knows agree. so much. He knows so much. Um, so, ah, I didn't even know Ron was here. We clarified what with Jeff, Ron? What did you clarify? Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about the plants. I'm wondering how they're oh, going to take it down. He clarified that with Jeff that they that Siv and Ugo had heard the fireball. Oh. Because it is such okay. a noisy spell, it is incredibly loud. It's essentially okay. like a big old boom happening. So, so they clearly know there's severe danger down yes. there, clearly. Okay. I mean, if Behemoth's already conjuring a fireball initially, something's going down. Also, Dreamblaze, they, Dreamblaze says they can't kill the Viscount because he's already dead. I don't think he's dead. He's just really old. I don't know. The they, way that he was describing that the Viscount was being, like, every time he bludgeoned him, like, flesh was coming off of him but it didn't really seem like it was doing much to him so maybe he he has like a flesh shielding kind of like say he's, had i'm gonna say he's not dead final answer the great old ones are pretty cool and uh, ron says yet oh yeah he's going to be dead soon i know he looked bad at the end of the battle uh i i i i have a feeling and I'm, I could be wrong. Mm. I think the party has got this. I don't know why, but I'm severely confident in the party right now. They, they, the Lord of Crows, unfortunately, may not even come back. <laughs> and uh, the Viscount's almost gone. Uh, Lady Josephine's already gone. I think they got this. I think they got this. But who knows what other tricks Jeff has up his sleeve? Because that's exciting. So, uh, I want to do it now just because I'm really into it and we're talking about it. You wanted our prediction thing to be how many rounds yes. James yes. is going to hold. Okay, you go first. So, okay, doing the math here. He holds uh, the Lord of Crows for one minute in banishment as long as he can hold concentration. So if he's done one round already. So that's six seconds. He has 10 rounds essentially. So there's nine rounds left to roll for concentration. I think he's going to be able to hold for six. And then he's going to get very unlucky. He's just going to have a bad roll. I think six rounds. But I think that they can survive it as long as that he can hold for six rounds. Because we also don't know what else is underneath that bone pile. I know. I really... Oh. I'm going to say... Because he has to get a turn. <clears throat> I'm gonna say I'm gonna say four. I want it to be four. <laughs> four wouldn't be the worst ever, but it would be difficult. I bet. And uh, the Wookie King, I, I noticed your comments that uh, they can always use the liquor of the dead to talk to him. I concur. That's very smart. But who knows how it works? Who knows? It'll be interesting. Um, any, before we move on to our amazing Watcher Gallery segment, any last comments, thoughts on this episode? Just hitting it once again. Please go to the secret room. Gosh, there's a lot of theories there. And I have a really good one about the Liquor of the Dead. Go there and read because there's a lot of oh. really interesting stuff. And put up your own thoughts because I really want to talk about them, but we can't talk about them on here because that could give it away to our wonderful ron ogden or other people who pop in so we want them to be as organic as possible and be able to, to what? come up what with their own it... character decisions go, go there for what though what are you go, what are go you, there for theory size on yeah just I'll in general have... 
I say it, it gives it away, but it's okay, about not trying what to, I'm just curious. I'm like, what are you what are you curious about? So check the channel and find out what she's even curious about, I guess. Um mine's liquor just, is dead. Just that's my thought. Liquor of the dead. There's something special it. about it other than what we've already experienced. So there's your theory. Good job. That's my theory. <laughs> that, that's about all I can so, give you. So I think that this episode is brought to you by the letter C, and that's my final, <laughs> that's my final answer. It's beautiful. I just love it. Uh, so now we have a new segment on the show called The yes. Watcher's Gallery. There has been so many amazing, amazing, amazing fan art and fan-made stuff that I feel has just been waving on by, and I just wanted it. No other reason, but just wanted to take a couple of minutes to appreciate the creativity this, this amazing community has. So without further ado, when you first walk into the gallery, what are we seeing, Joey? Yes. So this beautiful piece of art was made by Cam the I can't talk. <laughs> Cam the Fog Pal. <laughs> um, this is her most recent art. She was a little one who was a watcher, guest watcher a few weeks ago. She drew Fahima. She drew Lily. This was what she was working on next. And it is so yeah. cool. I really love Mr. Whispers in the Corner. It's so cute with the meep on top. Beautiful piece of art. Oh my gosh. That's absolutely wonderful. I really like how she captured James. I, I just, I really like how. Oh, looks. James looks and, sexy. And, and Ego, Ego looks fierce, but also I'm not terrified of him in a way like if he just comes and talks to me, but if mm. he gets mad, he means business. So I, I like how she captured him very well. I just love how the amulet is like in the middle. It's, it's such a beautiful piece of art. I, I actually legitimately want it on my wall. It is beautiful. So when you turn to the corner and you look on the other side of the wall, what are we looking at next, Joey? Ah, humankind people. This was made by Phoenix Ablaze. She's so talented. Uh, and I knew she drew this for Pahima and Pride Month. It's just so cute. Uh, it's just, it's adorable. And yes, yay Pride Month. Everybody show love to Pride Month. To be honest uh, Yeah, I just, I can't get enough of this art. And then it's not even over. If you turn to the other side of the room, What's next? Yes. So this was made Whoa. by Dazed and Confused. It was crocheted by the user Dazed and Confused. She actually made it based off of mm -hmm. um, Ugo's orc, uh, the flag for Thorn. Um, mm -hmm. She made this based off of another art that that's in this. I think it's still in bronze background when he plays um but she crocheted that and it looks so cool and i want it and it's so, uh, it's awesome. ron ogden says hammer of oh it disappeared G gorn orn thorn yes it's the it's the thorn logo the thorn okay logo. yes yes it's beautiful uh and yeah i want i wish i could crochet anything um so when you go down the hall and you turn left to the next room what are we looking at Yes. Oh okay. My. I'm so sorry. I can't pronounce names. Okay. But this was done by the talented Scott Bratek. <clears throat> uh, you should go to his Instagram. He has amazing, amazing art. This isn't even the only piece that he's done. Uh, Scott Bratek on Instagram. He's so talented. He also did a thing of um, um, the Duke. He, he's so talented and it's so Great. He just recently joined the Discord, too, so everybody should go and show him some love, because he is fantastic. Uh, and I think I think this is, uh, uh, the next is one of my favorite rooms, jo Joey, let's see if we're in. Oh, yes, this is beautiful. Oh. This is done by uh, Zuri, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Mm -hmm. um, it's a beautiful moment where Sue is banished, and he's just chilling with Mr. Whispers. This is one of the most, I can't, it's such a deep piece of art for such a deep moment. And even the way she drew Sip's face. Oh, it's just so perfect. I actually want this on my wall too. It's beautiful. Yeah, I want that one. I, I think it's just a beautiful way to capture a tabaxi. And I just, oh my gosh, just the facial expression was beautiful. And it looks like, looks like Mr. Whispers is legitimate giving him counsel and listening and going, I'm here for you, buddy. I'm here for you. Well, the thing that makes this piece so beautiful is even 
if you don't know the scene that she drew this from, you can tell what's going on. You can see the mm-hmm. emotion in Siv's face. Like like you said, you can see that Mr. Whispers is comforting and it's just beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, I'm already like crying halfway through this gallery. And oh, what's in the next goodness. room, Joey? Oh <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is, I, I don't know how to describe this art besides um, amazing, done by yours truly. <laughs> uh, this will keep everyone guessing for days. Uh, Grim faded. Is that her hair? Is she jumping rope? Is it a dome over her head? You'll <laughs> never know. The questions will never end. It's beautiful. That was, wow, May 16th. That wasn't that long ago. And that's when we all hung out together and uh, played Jackbox. And uh, I hung up the picture of me and Grim, and it's beautiful. Oh, it's so yeah. precious. It's all right. Grim faded, I love you. What's next, Joey? Oh, here's my wonderful piece of art here. Uh, it's I. This is how great I can draw. Um, so we have here. I mean, it's not as good as mine, but it's getting there. It's yeah, getting you know, there. you can kind of understand what's going on. This is the scene where uh, uh, James and Lily first meet the Viscount. He's sitting on his throne and drinking the liquor of the dead drooling a bit of it out of his mouth and you know you got a gull that's picking flesh off of him and of course to his right is lady josephine and to his left is sir otter pop and so that is the best i can do folks this is why you, could, you artists you are amazing draw. no thank you I, I i i only draw technical drawings and that's all i can do if it has numbers to it i'm golden if it causes it's art really cool no. I actually really love it. I love the, the touch of the seagull on top of the head. Very nice. I like it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I think I think we're entering. I think we're entering my favorite room. Um, and if you. Oh, ooh, this, OK. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So this is done by uh, JD Illustrates, who is amazing. Uh, this is one of my favorite pieces of art ever. It's so cool. It, uh, the dolls are just, I can't, I can't, I ask, I can't even make a complete sentence about this piece of art. It's just gorgeous. Um, and just for those of you who don't know or haven't read through, for the watch party contest, one of the prizes that we are giving out is a specialized fan art by JD Illustrate. So keep that in mind. He's actually providing art to the winner of one of the winners of the contest, just to keep that in mind, because it's such a beautiful piece of art. Now I think we're entering my favorite room, and in the center is a beautiful, beautiful statue of this stud muffin. This is done by Sim <laughs> Vicious, sculpted, painted, everything by scratch. How beautiful is that? I just can't. I want it so bad. Oh, I, I will give yes. it to you. This is amazing. It just captures yeah. him so well. He looks awesome, even though I still what don't like sweet beard. <laughs> I didn't hear that last part. All I heard is what a stud muffin. So then the <laughs> next thing, the next thing in this room with the, with the beautiful sculpture in the center, if you go to the side, there's actually a video that uh, we're going to play in this magical room. Um, this is one of my favorite videos ever, and I thought we would play it for you in honor of the white beard. White beard. <laughs> white beard. Give white beard a problem. mute my sound that's how much i needed to watch that video again um is done by forest elf uh who everyone should go check out her 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 channel and in fact i'm probably going to at everything that we talked about and uh, post it again on the discord i cannot tell you enough how much i've watched that video she did that 
such a good job and I, I support all of her videos and I know she's still making more. So for herself, girl, can't wait for more. Um, that isn't even all of the pieces. There were more. Um, I, I, I asked everyone if it's okay for me to show that there are on here. And there's so much more that we still haven't even gotten to. Um, so yeah, the Watchers Gallery will be back. This community is so talented and I love every single, every single one of you. Where can I watch your videos? I will post her YouTube channel um, on the Discord. I don't know her channel by heart because I, I just have her tab sitting up there and constantly, so I can't tell you. But I will be posting everything in there. Um, she's amazing. All of you guys are amazing. Yeah. That concludes the end of the watch gallery for now as we continue to expand this amazing community. Um, I think now, before we bring on our amazing uh, guest today, we, we have a quick brief commercial, yes? Yes, yes. So, you know, we're, we still have that contest going, so don't forget to make your submissions. And, and so it's about uh, displaying the world of Vine. And so we have a commercial here from Quillis Realty Group. Um, so, Mr. Man Behind the Curtain, can you press play, please? Imagination into reality. Quillis Realty Group. That island, we, Fahima and myself were having a very interesting discussion that could make a very interesting base of operations. It's a place that, that, that no one knows about. I mean, it was a deserted island, literally, literally yeah. a, a few days ago. And now, bright green, filled with waterfalls, you should, um, we, we were thinking and wanted Untapped to- Untapped magical to put, power, probably. Oh my goodness, yes, of course. You know, it could be a very interesting look and it's a central location. And from here, you could raid the- this, You could build your this, own government. You could oh build your own schools, educate goodness. your son, let him, uh, oh. you know, play in the field. Infrastructure, fields. bridges. The game stars. must be fabulous. <laughs> so perhaps it uh, does deserve a, a visit. <laughs> So that was a, a nice little commercial. I think uh, if James decides, you know, maybe magic isn't for him anymore, I think he should go into the real estate business. I think he has a good potential there. Uh, so uh, thank you so he much, Gorbin Plate. Yeah, he would be very yeah. successful. Yeah, Gorbin Plate is one of our uh, top clones behind the scenes who helped make the watch party the watch party. He's amazing. He's Gorbin Plate, we love you. I can give him <laughs> pieces and, and and clips and say, can you make this a beautiful bouquet? And he does every single time. So thank you so much, sir. Ah, now, without further ado, I want to bring on our first guest hailing from Jamaica. I'm hoping he's ready. Mr. D.A.B. Stephen Baker, how are you? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we interrupt this program to a special introduction to tonight's special guest. This show has been brought to you by the Wash Party from the Dungeon Run. And speaking on the letter C, this show has been brought to you by, by the letters D, a and B, which are the initials of my full name, Davian Andrew Baker. And now, hailing from South Lamar, Westmoreland, Jamaica, the last time you actually see me from the last Zoom chat, I was, I have full hair. But now, tonight, he is the one the only freshly trim head himself, Davion Baker. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Hey. Uh, I have to say, you you make your. Uh, I think the WWE wants to hire you to do intros, my friend. <laughs> I I know how much that would mean to you. <laughs> Great, amazing intro, A plus. How are you, my friend? I'm doing well. How are you too? pretty good 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 long day but hanging in there doing good i i get very energized when i'm here with you guys so everything's fantastic mm -hmm. uh 
you already explained how you uh, got your name, which is beautiful. Uh, why don't you tell people what got you into the show? Why don't we dive right into it? Okay, so my name is Davian Baker, and for people who see my uh, name, that's how it's been written and how it's pronounced. So the so basically, you have to pronounce it right. It's Davian, so it's D A, which is Dave, E V E, which is Eve, and uh, well, actually, it's E V for the Eve, and then it's the E O N with say uh Davy Young. So that's the Young. So that's why it's pronounced Davy Young Baker. So I'm actually 21 years old. I'm currently a student at uh UTech. Uh I'm uh so far I've been watching uh D D for now two years since started uh 2018. Uh, I'm a big uh, game f- game show fan and also a big uh, wrestling fan. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, how did you find the dungeon run? So, like I said, I've been watching D and D for two years. So, here's how my journey starts. So, I've been watching videos so many times on YouTube. I say, let me see what I could watch this time. So I see something interesting to one of the YouTube channels I've been subscribed, which is up, up, down, down. If you know the, if you know um, a wrestling star name, Xavier Woods, he's the main, or in my case, in my case, the captain of the of his channel. So he actually introduced me to a D and D show called Rollout, and ever since then, it's been it's history. But later on, <laughs> after two seasons, I think, didn't see a lot of d d later. So it's just when uh, the next year comes that I actually watched my second uh, D&D show, which is actually called, um, I think it was uh, D&D Live. Mm-hmm. Then, then later on, I actually go to a uh, another show called um, D and D Relics and Rarities. That was my third show uh, in in all my uh, D and D shows. And then later on, I actually come to my to that at that time my newest uh, number one show, which is called Acquisitions Incorporated. And I watch almost every uh, episodes. Uh, since then, but because of the pandemic, they actually finished on March. Then I said, "Okay, I need to watch something. I need to watch another D and D show." Then I actually been introduced to the Dungeon Run. I actually watched the Dungeon Run now. I think since like uh, episode forty one. And by the way, that's my actually my first live uh, show at that time. So, so at that time, I realized I have a lot of shows to pick up. So, even before I done the live, I actually see those uh, episodes. So, it's kind of I kind of was uh, double dipping with the shows. First, it was just the past shows, but now when I actually reached, when I actually watched my first. Uh, live show, which is episode 41, Apparatus uh, Operation. Then I actually actually d- double dipping, and I've been watching the live shows ever since. And now this has actually become my number one show because everything involved is fantastic. So I've been loving the Dungeon Run ever since then. And right now, I'm pretty much finished, to say the least, with the past episode. So I'm actually now up to date. Yeah, I was going to say, if you didn't mention it, he's one of the... I coined him the Double Dipper because he was catching up while watching live, and he's he's pretty much in the middle now. Why don't you tell everyone your your few favorite things you love about the Dungeon Run? What are like some of your favorite things that makes this the number one show for you? First thing... It's the first show you're doing live stream, live stream, and also you're doing live because not not a lot of pe- not a lot of D and D shows would do live, especially like on uh, online, like real time. 
So it has, so that's a first. I like the show. Not only that, I love the cast: Jeff, uh, Katie, uh, Jared, uh, Jessica, uh, Morgan, and Ron. I love the cast. So much, especially Jeff with the voices. Why that man is amazing. He's a master, I have to say. He is. He is. What What is some of your favorite Jeff voices? Oof. Like I said, I love Gerald. Free hashtag free Gerald. Hashtag free Gerald. Hmm. Gerald's pretty great. What What? Out of all but, the voices. If you could but be able to, say, to do one, what would it be? Ooh, like, I'm not always good with voices, so I'm not sure. Not the Savage Manders? Ooh, that's going to be <laughs> <Yeah>. tough. <laughs> that one's hard. But I have to say, when I did first hear uh, Jeb doing Whitebeard, why? I have to say, and since he come back, I say, man, I miss that, vo- miss that voice. I have to say. Me too. <laughs> but I have to say, since the recent one, boy, the Viscount, I have to say, it's coming to a close second because how funny it is, I have to say. That's what I was waiting for you to say. I'm like, you're coming out of the you like the Viscount, waiting for you to say it. Okay. Why don't you tell us then some of your, your favorite moments of the show? Okay. So I've been loving the Siv, the Siv and uh, Lily um, romance already. I have to say, mm-hmm. I did catch up and I've been loving this. Also, never forget the kiss from episode 42. Love it ever since the... The bingo uh, saga. I have to say, I'm so grateful since the uh, the tardy plunder and since um, Melvis actually talk about bingo. I have to say, it's a good thing uh, the Sheva go goes to uh, bingo. Well, almost, but I'm glad the team actually saved <laughs> uh, say bingo. And I'm gl- and I have to say that brings to my one of my favorite moments. That's when. Uh, James sent uh, the message to everybody that bingo is safe and you could come back. Yes, it, it really is. It's, it's a beautiful moment for so many different reasons. So I totally don't, I make sense of why that one was your favorite. Uh, what, what got you to join the Discord? Because I don't think we talked about that. Hmm. I never I thought it too, but I feel like because I've been seen, because I've been seeing uh, Lord Airban uh, mentioning the Discord, and because mm-hmm. I want to be joined with this wonderful and man, right now, this is a wonderful community I'm seeing right now. So I had to join in, and by the way, at that time, I'm not sure which episode, but I know that. Uh, they, uh, Dad, Pool, and I actually go to the uh, Discord at the same time. So that's when mm-hmm. we actually uh, joined the Discord. So he was your Discord buddy from the get-go? Yes. <laughs> How long have you been on the Discord? Not long now. I yeah. feel like we're, we're in months now. Like at least, mm, I think, about April, I think. Yeah, because you're, for those who don't know, you're a relatively newer watcher. You didn't start watching until January of this year. Is that correct? I think so, yeah. To, to say yeah. That. And you caught up pretty quickly. Well, you're yeah. a double dipper, but you're still, you're, catch, you're doing great. You're doing great. Uh, yeah. Well, I want to, I want to take it, as I told you, I want to kind of give you the floor to talk about or tell anyone Anything else that you want to? What do you have to say for the show, the community? I want to give you the floor. For okay. Okay, thanks. I was want to uh, ask you, you two, how, uh, this question is actually three parts. So, before the dungeon run, A, uh, when do you started uh, watching D&D shows? B, uh, 
do you ever be do you ever do like any games like these um do are you in a, a campaign to say the least mm-hmm. and um see let me see what I was thinking um do you ever do you ever been a dm before so that's my street so that's my street part question you want to start fail off or you want me to start uh, i'll start um i got the dungeon run is my only exposure to dnd um i fell in love <laughs> can you tell and um i am currently doing my very i will say my first real campaign um with the mod squad here on the discord which some of you may know um so i am the babe of the group uh so i we've been playing for 13 sessions which is super exciting it's for it's it's amazing and as far as dming no but i'm gonna say it here to maybe hopefully hold myself accountable uh like most people jeff is so inspiring and i feel i have the imagination and what it takes to be a decent DM. So uh, after Jeff's inspiration, I'm currently going to start working on my own homebrew world and my plan is to DM a game soonish. So nice. Exciting. It's gonna happen. All right. So going my good. my exposure to D and D before the dungeon run, uh I didn't watch any actual dungeon run our, our D&D shows before this. This was actually my first D&D show to watch, but I did play D&D before this. I had a campaign that I was in um, as basically a, an engineer of sorts and the driver of our group in a campaign called Hell on Earth, which was basically post-apocalyptic. And then I ended up turning into a Valkyrie because of some sort of morphing machine. But anyways... That was my first experience to it, and it was a really, really difficult campaign, and we had to dis- disassemble for some time because, um, to answer your question about being a DM, I don't DM. I haven't. I do intend to in the future, but what I focus a lot of my time on, at least from uh, September through probably about April, is I actually am the head referee for Oklahoma on a robotics show called, uh, not a robotics show, a robotics competition called First Tech Challenge. Oh. And so I wear this I wear this purple hair for that as well because it's red versus blue. So that bike's purple, so I'm neutral. Um, but basically I read the rules that go on in the book and I help make sure that everyone abides by those rules and that we all have a good time, much like what a DM would do. So it's just DMing. You have to come up with the imagination, which I guess I could do that. But that's an awful lot of rules to remember. There's books and books and books. And for what I do, there's two books that are like 30 pages long. So that's a little easier to do than DMing in my my thought process. But one of these uh, days, I think one of these days I might actually DM with some friends, maybe, maybe online. Who knows? But I'm open. I don't have a current campaign that I'm doing right now. Um, I would like to get into one one of these days, but it just hasn't made, hasn't happened right now. So that's okay. Yeah. It's the same for here. Uh, because I don't have so much friends that do D&D or are involved with it, I mostly watch uh, D&D shows nowadays, which now... I've been watching some uh, shows that involve some uh, force cards, which are the FOG and the FOEs. For both of you, which team? What which team you are you in right now? Do you have to? Do, do you have to guess? Do 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 I really? You want no, me to say? No, I know. I know <laughs> you, you uh, Jess. But I was wondering for Van to say the least. So. I'm actually in my own team that I'm hoping becomes more popular. I'm still, I'm still working on this. I need to really come up with a good campaign slogan, force a neutral. It is legit. I know a lot of people say it's force a meh, but I have this thing where I feel like if you're going to have evil, you're going to have good. You got to have somewhere in between. You have this chart of chaos and neutrality and lawful. You have good, neutral, and evil. You gotta have the neutral in there, folks. 
You gotta yeah, guys, you have to have you I'm have neutral. to have that force card with Behemoth stubs her toe. Team neutral. No, there you gotta go. have force cards Burn. that have uh, <laughs> a certain thing happen with a certain dice roll that could be good, or a certain thing happens with the dice roll that could be bad. So you know, there's some gray area cards in there, and that's where force and neutral should come into play. Do you know? I have to say. All right. Moment of truth, though, Davion. What is what are you on? I have to say, I've been talking to Deadpool since, and I have to agree. Vander uh, Slice, you're, I tell you, I'm into you. Because here's the thing. Even after you just tax, even <laughs> after we uh, chat, I actually text to this, too. One more. Because, because for, and I've been seeing since the first episode with the uh, Force of Good, and it kind of makes sense. That it's kind of making too easy for like we're giving the team like a hand, but when I see the forces of evil, I have to say it kind of make the the show very interesting. But seeing how those those um those cards uh, really plays out, and seeing how Grim Faded always do it the uh, disadvantage. My God, where is that bank account going to? Wow. That made me wonder why I could actually help the players. However, not only that, but make, but make sure they earn their, their roles. So that's why I want to make sure that team neutral is on the job because I want to make sure that if they got um this uh if i if if i could give them um advantage to to counter that disadvantage that means says i'm doing my job but here's the thing i'm still proving making sure i want them to prove themselves to get uh, from a straight roll or a good advantage or having the best luck with those disadvantages because so there are sometimes, uh, even I've seen some few shows that when the players did get the disadvantage, they sometimes, not all, but sometimes right. get the best roles. So that's why if I see a disadvantage, advantage. If I see advantage for the enemies, now that's when I put the disadvantage. So that's well, why. I, so that's why I'm team. Uh, team uh, neutral for for life, and also well, um, I'm also team uh, Steve too. I have to say I like Steve to say, but I also like Algo. I'm I'm pretty much liking all team, all the party to say the least. But <laughs> hashtag truly, team everyone. Yes, but truly I'm team a neutral for sure, for life. Well, on that note, uh, buddy, as I'm surrounded by neutrality, apparently. Um, thank you for, for being a guest on our show. Uh, I really, really, really appreciate it. You're amazing, even though you chose the wrong team. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, and we'll we'll, we'll definitely twice. be talking more on the Discord. But thank you again for joining. It was awesome. And okay. we'll talk to you very soon. Bye. One more thing. One more thing. As Jeff always say, uh, humankind, be bold. I want to put a, a little spin to it. So it's humankind, be bold, C colon, we're human. Be kind to one another. Be kind to one another, and also, we all need each other. Yay! That thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. True story, everybody. Um, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, this it really was a fun episode. There were so many ups, so many. There was so much this episode. It was fantastic, and I'm so excited, Ingrid. I'm so excited to get back to this battle. Can it be yes. Wednesday yet? Oh, oh my gosh. We have how many? We have less than 23 hours to Let's start this battle back up. We're going to dive right on into it. It's going to be amazing and intense. And yep. I just, I don't know if I can, I don't think I can manage. I just, I'm so anxious. And I might have to stay up and watch the episode again tonight just, just to get, get back into it. Yeah, I might have to go watch White Coat. I mean, I don't know. But thank you guys for joining us. 
Can't wait to see all of you guys tomorrow night, 23 hours and counting. And as Davion said, guys, everybody, humankind, people. Be both. Bye.